Reading literature can be a fulfilling experience, but it can also be challenging when trying to uncover deeper meaning within the text. In his book, How to Read Literature Like a Professor, Thomas Foster offers a clear and accessible introduction to literary analysis that can help readers detect hidden meanings in any fictional work. Foster draws on his extensive experience as an English professor to provide illuminating examples from a variety of classic and contemporary literature. He explains how certain themes are developed across different works, and how authors often incorporate references to other texts within their own works. The book also explores the ways in which literary devices like symbolism, metaphor, and irony can be used to create new meaning and enrich the reading experience. For example, Foster shows how a seemingly innocuous detail, such as a flea in a poem, can actually play a seductive and erotic role, or how irony can be used to create new meaning from a classic poem. Ultimately, how to read literature like a professor offers readers the tools they need to analyze literature on a deeper level, to appreciate the subtle nuances of a text, and to gain a new perspective on familiar works. Whether you're an English teacher looking for a new approach to teaching literature or simply a curious reader wanting to unlock the hidden depths of your favorite books, this book is an essential guide to literary analysis. Idea 1. The Art of Reading When we read a book, we often focus on the surface level of the story, the plot, the characters, and the events that unfold. But what about the deeper layers of meaning that lie beneath? Experienced readers know that there is more to a book than meets the eye, and that the real magic of literature lies in its ability to convey complex emotions and ideas. To become an adept reader, it is essential to learn how to decode the patterns and symbols that authors use to convey meaning. One way to do this is by grouping these elements into three major categories, memory, symbols, and patterns. Memory refers to the way in which skilled readers make connections between the book they are reading and others they have read before. By recognizing similarities between characters, themes, and events, readers can gain a deeper understanding of the text and its place within the larger literary canon. Symbols are another important tool for uncovering hidden meanings in literature. Often, an object or event in a story represents something beyond its literal meaning. By identifying these symbols and deciphering what they stand for, readers can gain insight into the author's intentions and the themes that run throughout the book. Finally, Patterns can be a valuable tool for interpreting literature. By noticing recurring themes, motifs, and symbols, readers can gain a deeper understanding of the characters and the overall message of the book. By learning to decode the codes and patterns of literature, readers can unlock a whole new level of meaning and appreciation for their favorite books. So the next time you pick up a novel, take a moment to look beyond the surface level and discover the hidden depths that lie beneath. Idea 2 Universal Structures in Literature The quest is a popular structure in literature that features a quester, a destination, a stated reason to go, challenges along the journey, and a revelation. This structure can be seen in many novels, altered to fit different characters, settings, and situations. By using this conventional structure, authors can take something ordinary, like grocery shopping, and turn it into a knight's quest for self-knowledge. Thomas Pynchon's 1965 novel, The Crying of Lot 49, is an example of the quest structure. The main character, a young woman, drives between San Francisco and Southern California to carry out the will of her deceased lover. Along the way, she encounters strange characters, bizarre outsiders, and gets caught up in a dark conspiracy. Although the truth behind the conspiracy is never revealed, the character discovers her own independence and self-reliance, which is the unexpected revelation of the quest. The quest is just one of many universal structures that appear in literature. These structures allow authors to take familiar themes and stories and give them a new twist. By understanding these structures, readers can identify the underlying patterns and elements of a story and gain a deeper appreciation for the author's craft. Idea 3. The Art of Intertextuality Intertextuality is a fundamental aspect of literature that allows authors to borrow and adapt ideas from one another. While some readers may be disappointed by a lack of originality, intertextuality can actually deepen the reading experience and add layers of meaning to a work. Through intertextuality, writers can make references to previous works, borrow themes, and adapt stories to create something new. For example, D. H. Lawrence's novella, 
the Virgin and the Gypsy, uses a flood that is remarkably similar to Noah's flood in the Bible to comment on the cleansing powers of destruction. In addition, many authors pay homage to Shakespeare by making intertextual references to his plays within their own works. For instance, the musical West Side Story takes Romeo and Juliet as its model for a modern tale of star-crossed lovers. Ultimately, intertextuality is a way for writers to engage with the vast body of literature that has come before them, to build on existing ideas and create something new. By reading widely and recognizing these intertextual references, readers can gain a deeper understanding of the messages and themes that underlie the books they love. Idea 4. The Power of Symbolism in Literature Symbols are powerful tools in literature that can convey deeper meanings and messages beyond their surface appearance. Just like waving to someone conveys a greeting and recognition, symbols in literature can also represent complex ideas and emotions. Mark Twain's The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn is a prime example of the power of symbolism. In the novel, the Mississippi River represents both destruction and safety. The river initially causes destruction through flooding, but it also serves as a passage to freedom for the slave Jim. The river, therefore, becomes a symbol for both danger and safety. Symbols have also helped authors to communicate taboo topics subtly. John Donne's The Flea, for instance, employs a flea as a symbol to communicate the sexual relationship between the speaker and his mistress. Since censorship laws prohibited direct references to sex, Dunn used the flea as a metaphor for the consummation of their relationship. To fully appreciate the depth of symbolism in literature, readers should pay close attention to recurring motifs or images that stand out. Symbols can add richness and complexity to a work, and offer readers a deeper understanding of the characters, themes, and messages conveyed by the author. Idea 5. The Importance of Setting in Literature the setting of a literary work is not just a backdrop for the story, but an essential component that can deeply impact the reader's experience. The atmosphere and mood of a story can be shaped by the setting, creating a sense of tension or calmness that resonates with the reader. Geographical location, climate, and weather are all elements of the setting that can be used to create symbolism and meaning in a literary work. Seasons, in particular, are commonly used to convey emotional and thematic significance. Authors often use the setting to establish a sense of place and time, and to immerse the reader in the world of the story. William Faulkner's Yip Napatafa County, for example, is a fictional representation of the Deep South that serves as a lens through which to view social issues and cultural traditions. In essence, the setting of a literary work can function like a character of its own, influencing the plot and themes in important ways. So when reading, it's important to pay attention not only to the characters and plot, but also to the setting and how it contributes to the overall impact of the story. Idea 6. Exploring Irony in Literature Irony is a powerful tool in literature, as it subverts the reader's expectations and throws all the rules out the window. In order to understand irony, we must distinguish between expectation and intention, and recognize when the opposite of what we expect to happen, happens. Irony can take many forms, from unexpected plot twists to ironic character actions, and even be woven into the very title of a novel. For example, Samuel Beckett's play, Waiting for Godot, subverts the reader's expectation when Godot never shows up, creating a curious feeling and pointing the audience in the direction of the subversive social comment at the heart of the play. By recognizing irony, readers can gain a deeper understanding of literary conventions and become more experienced readers. Irony is an element that keeps readers on their toes, making them question their assumptions and uncovering deeper meaning within the text. Summary. One of the most effective ways to enrich your reading experience is to read books that take place in a different time or place than your own. However, in order to fully appreciate and understand the text, it's important to do a bit of research beforehand. Start by learning about the major historical events of the period and the cultural and social pressures that were present at the time of the book's writing. This will give you a better understanding of the context in which the story was created and can help you to identify the underlying themes and messages within the text. In addition, consider reading books from different perspectives than your own. By immersing yourself in a story about a completely different walk of life, you'll be able to connect with the universal insights offered by the story 
no matter how foreign it may seem at first. Overall, the key to uncovering the universal message in literature is to read closely and pay attention to the patterns, symbols, and connections within the text. By doing so, you'll be able to read between the lines and gain a deeper understanding of the author's intentions and the underlying themes of the story. Now, thank you for taking the time to watch, and if you found value in this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. And in case you want to buy the book, use the link in the description. Trust me, you won't regret it.